fry them up. Oh yeah. Hey everybody, this is Fry. So we are going to continue to explain the great basic decks in this game. I'm going to be going through the remaining heroes in this game and uh, be telling you about the all basic card decks. So there's no premium cards in these uh, decks, not even premium uncommons. And uh, we have some pretty great decks here. So obviously as you get your premium cards, you can definitely add them into these decks to make them better. In the meantime, we are going to be going with the all basic decks, and uh, we are going to do Brain Freeze, Professor Brainstorm, and Morticia, Zemek, and Neptuna in this video. So let's get going. Here is Brain Freeze. This is what we got from Brain Freeze. Uh, he is a sneaky zombie, so of course we are going to be doing a Gravestone deck. That's what we do with all the sneaky zombies. This is actually a really great deck. Uh, you're starting off with Headstone Carver. First I'm going to explain the Gravestones, and then I'll explain the rest of the deck. So Headstone Carver, you play on 1. Uh, good stats for a 1 drop, 1-3. One, also, whenever you play another Gravestone zombie is revealed, as long as Headstone Carver is still alive, that zombie will get plus 1, plus 1. So you're really trying to get Headstone Carver in your starting hand in the beginning, and then you come in with one of your gravestones. We have four copies on turn two of uh, Swashbuckler. This is the preferred one to get on turn two. Uh, with the buff of the Headstone Carver, this will become a 3-3, and whenever this hits the opponent's plant, uh, hero, this will actually get plus one, plus one. So theoretically, this could start as a 3-3 and become a 4-4 coming into turn three, which is really, really great. The other gravestone that we have that costs two in this deck is the rats and the Pied Pipers, so this one is not as good, the stats are only 2-1, so if it's buffed by the Headstone Carver, it becomes a 3-2. Usually you're trying to play this against an opponent's plant, so you'll actually get the ability that when it's revealed, the plants here will get minus 1, minus 1. Sometimes it's good just to play on tempo, turn 1 Headstone Carver, turn 2 rats, and forget about if it's going to uh, be fronted by your opponent's minion. Uh, very often they're actually going to try to stick something in front of the rats, uh, if they, because really it could be a swashbuckler zombie, they don't even know what's inside the gravestone, so I would say just play Headstone Carver on turn 1, play one of these on turn 2, and on turn 3 in this deck we actually have some good options. First of all we have the classic, the smelly zombie. 2-4, uh, it's deadly, so this is good for removing your opponent's creatures. It also has very good stats for a 3-drop. If this gets buffed by Headstone Carver, it becomes a 3-5 deadly, which is amazing for a 3-cost minion. Besides for that, we also have the Loudmouth. Loudmouth starts off as a 1-1. One, one. It will give any zombie, including itself, a 2-2. Two, two. So, again, theoretically, this could become a 4-attack, four 4-health four minion if it's buffed by Headstone Carver, which is really, really amazing. So, besides for the Gravestones in this deck, we also are running some Imp Synergy. Uh, we have three copies of the Fishy Imp. The Fishy Imp is amphibious, of course, so it is you can play in that water lane. We also are running four copies of the, of the Hot Dog Imp. And I'm going to actually make the switch up again in this deck. We are going to remove uh, the hot dog, one copy of the hot dog. We actually would rather have four copies of Fishy Imp. Uh, having those <clears throat> stronger minions with three attack in the water lane is probably better than the hot dog imp in this matchup. So three copies of hot dog imp, and in the three slot we are also running four copies of imp commander. So imp commander, when it or one of your other imps in the stack hits face, damages your opponent's hero, you will draw a card. This is very good for card draw. Getting a lot of cards will help you as the game progresses have better plays, more options, and uh, we'll make sure you don't run out of, the, out of cards as the game progresses. We are running two copies of the Dolphin. Oh, I forgot about the Dolphin, so maybe we actually should be running only three copies. This is Dolphin, 3-2, pretty decent stats for a 3-drop. Uh, not bad. Uh, this is actually why I, I originally had in this deck uh, three copies of the Fishy Imp and four copies of the Hot Dog. So we're, <laughs> I'm actually switching this again. Sorry about that. Uh, four copies, right, we don't want the aquatic minions to have six of those, five is definitely enough for a deck, so we're running three copies of the Fishium, four of the Hot Dog, and two of the uh, Dolphin. A lot of times as you're making decks, this is a very good uh, adjustment to make. If you notice, hey, there's too many minions that are aquatic, so you want to maybe reduce those so you don't end up with conflicting cards in your hand, etc. So this is the right, really the right balance. Uh, as well, we have in the 5 drop, I'll explain the late game, we have 3 copies of Locust Swarm, so this is very good for removing opponent's cards. Uh, there's really a lot of removal in this deck, because you have both Locust Swarm, which destroys a plant, you also have the Smelly Zombie, which has Deadly, so it could theoretically destroy any plant when it, you know, gets matched up against it. 
we are running four copies of Smashing Gargantuar. This is a really, really strong card, a great finisher, five attack, five health. All Gargantuars have Frenzy. Uh, so use this as a finisher, build up with your gravestones. This is a very, very solid deck. I would definitely suggest this to beginners who have Brain Freeze. And here's what we got for Professor Brainstorm. So we have four plumbers uh, that just does two damage. Don't use this on your opponent's face, on your opponent's hero. Really save these in your hands and try to destroy one of your opponent's creatures with them. You can definitely do the bungee plumber to your opponent's face if they only have one or two health left, so this will finish them off. We are running four co three copies of the Chimney Sweep. This is a really good one drop. You play it. It becomes a 3-2 as long as you're playing it on that first lane on height, so definitely try to start off with this. We are also running three copies of the Tennis. We are also running three copies of the Tennis Champ. This is when it's played, it gets three attack this turn. So eventually, you know, it really gets that one shot of four damage and then it becomes just a 1-1. One, one. So good to save this to remove one of your opponent's plants that has four health. Uh, maybe better not to play this just dry and hitting your opponent's face unless you're really rushing down your opponent. Uh, the, begin the early game for Professor Brainstorm is kind of weak. We do have the three chimneys which are good, but we're going to continue on with the weak early game in this deck, which is Cuckoo Zombie. It costs two, it's a 4-1, so this will trade against almost any other two drop. The problem is that Really, almost anything will kill it, even a very small minion, even a little 1-1, one, one. so sometimes you can get really great value out of your Cuckoo Zombies, sometimes they're kind of miserable. We are running four copies of Bonus Attack, Lurch for Lunch, but Zombie does a bonus attack. A great play would be to turn one, use your Chimney Sweep, and turn two, use the Lurch for Lunch. That will protect the Chimney Sweep so you can keep that minion on the board and keep on doing damage to your opponent. We're running four copies of Newspaper Zombie. Again, it's decent. You really want to play the Newspaper Zombie only when it's going to be fronting one of your opponent's minions. Whenever it gets hit, it gets extra four attack. Otherwise, it's just a 1-4. The little one attack is really not going to make that much difference in this game. We're running also Pool Shark. Uh, pretty poor stats. Also, really the whole early game for Professor Brainstorm is very lacking. One reason why I would definitely not suggest this deck for beginners. It's a 3-1, it's Bullseye, just stuck one in this deck just for lack of anything, any other better two drops to put in. It's a, kind of kind of like Cuckoo Zombie, but it's one less attack and has Bullseye. We are running four copies of Disco. So this is a 3-1, it makes a 1-1. One, one. Uh, decent stats, if you really add everything up it becomes like a 4 attack and 2 health. Uh, you really want to try to play that little 1-1 one, one Dancer where it will block one of your opponent's minions from damaging you or hopefully will actually finish off one of them if you have an opponent's minion that only has one health left. Coming in the 4 slot, very good card. 4 slot, we are running Drum Major. This is a just a regular 4-4, four, four, cost 4, good stats. 4 copies of Chickening, of course. We This does 2 damage to each plant, really, really great. So the late game is definitely better for Professor Brainstorm. Uh, we're running four copies of the Imp Throwing Gargantuar. Good stats, 5, 5, 5. Whenever it gets hit, it spawns a little 1 1 Swabby that's amphibious. And coming up in the sixth slot, we are running three copies of Halo Copter, which you play as a trick. It spawns a 6 5 zombie. Uh, great combo in this deck. Maybe would be trying to play Halo Copter and using bonus attack. Each of those bonus attacks will do six damage. That's what the attack value of the Halo Copter is. This deck is really not that great. The early game is extremely weak. I know you have chimney sweeps, which are nice, but you know they'll only be played on heights, so it's very situational. I really would not suggest this deck to beginner players. The Professor Brainstorm does have a lot of very, very strong decks that you know cannot be made with just basic cards. That you need a lot of premium cards for those. The late game is very strong. You have field clear. You have a lot of very strong minions, so if you can play this deck and sort of get through the early game, you can really take over with the late game, but again, not suggesting it. Here's what we got for Immortitia. So Immortitia, you're really trying to play this game with tempo. We are running the two copies of Chimney Sweep, great one drop. Uh, when you play it on the Heights lane, it will become a 3-2. The main card you really kind of want to concentrate in this deck is this one, the Paparazzi. The Paparazzi starts off really weak. It's a 1-1. One, one. Whenever you play a trick, it grows. So definitely do not play the Paparazzi on turn 1 dry. You definitely want to wait until turn 2 and protect it with a trick. It'll either be one of the Morticia's powers or the Nibble or the Lunchbox. The Nibble decreases the attack and the health of one of your opponent's creatures by 1-1 one, one, and the Lunchbox will increase the attack and health of one of your creatures by 1-1. One, one. The Nibble, in addition, also heals you for 2. Not bad. 
you're really trying to use the paparazzi, use all these little tricks. For example, if you play the paparazzi on turn 2 with the lunge box, the paparazzi really becomes a 3-3, which is very good to have on turn 2. This is definitely a tempo deck at the beginning. We're running 4 copies of Lurch for Lunch, this does a bonus attack, this is a trick so it buffs your paparazzi, it's also very good with the chimney sweep, chimney sweep on 1, bonus attack on 2 will protect your chimney sweep, and also uh, if your paparazzi gets a lot of attack it's good for protecting that. We're running 3 copies of Rats, you really want to use in this deck, specifically the Rats, only if your opponent has a minion on the board, you play the Rats there, it's a gravestone, it will knock it down can do be very effective, specifically against team-ups if they have two plants in a row, this will decrease the attack and health of both of those by 1-1, one, one. so it's most effective like that. We are running three copies of the Dolphin Rider, just to add some amphibious power to the stack. 3-2, it's in the water, good stats. We are running three copies of the Loudmouth, just because it has good stats, it's a 1-1, one, one. it can give any zombie 2-2, two, two, including itself, so the worst case scenario becomes a 3-3 three, three on turn 3, which is very good stats. Uh, same thing with Drum Major, it is a f cost 4, and it's 4-4, four, four. just good stats, nice solid card. Uh, the late game is very strong in this deck. Uh, we are running 3 copies of Locust Swarm, just to destroy any plant. 3 copies of Smashing Garg, very great finisher. 5-5 five, five, Frenzy, so whenever it kills a, an opposing minion, it will keep on frenzying and keep on attacking. And we are running two copies of Halo Copter. You play this as a trick, it creates a 6-5. So the early game in this deck is very strong, uh, especially if you can get your paparazzis going with your tricks, especially if you have the chimney sweep at the beginning. The threes are okay. The two drop is actually really, really weak. The twos in, in Frame or Tish are actually very, very weak in the basic set. All you really have is the controlling uh, with the rats. Really on turn 2 it's better to play paparazzi with a trick than just to play rats. The late game in this deck is very very strong. 4, 5, 6, very very powerful. So uh, this deck is pretty good, probably not as good as the gravestone decks that I'm featuring in these videos, but Immortisha is a pretty strong hero. Definitely if you can protect your paparazzi with your tricks, you have a pretty good bet with this deck. Let's keep on going. And here is Zemek. So Zemek has a lot of little removal. We are running two copies of the Plumber in the stack. Does two damage. Good little removal. Don't do this to your opponent's face unless it will finish them off. I'm running three copies of Rolling Stone, which is similar. It will instead remove a plant with two or less health. So try to use the Plumbers to abuse the plants with low health and use the Rolling Stones to abuse the plants with low attack. Running four copies of Camel Crossing as you build up your creatures, it's very good if you have a couple creatures on the board, a few creatures on the board. Use Camel Crossing, gives all of them a little extra health. We are running Tennis Champ, we are running two copies of this. This really should be used as removal. The first time, the first turn it's put into play, it has four attack. So try to place this against a plant that has four health, you really get the most value out of it that way. Coming, coming in the two slot, we actually have some pretty powerful twos, we are running three copies of Conehead, two attack, two health, and armor, which reduces all the attack coming into it, so it's basically a 2-3, good stats. Three copies of the Flag Zombie, the Flag Zombie of course makes all zombies cost one less when it's played, so you can use the Flag Zombie either to get your late game in earlier, for example if you played Flag Zombie on turn three, you then will be able to play one of your five cost cards on turn four since it costs one less. You can also use the Flag Zombie to put tons of creatures on the board. Uh, which really could work out well in this deck since you have Camel Crossing, so you can play a lot of creatures and then give them all extra health. Also Orchestra Conductor, which will increase the attack of all your creatures, so if you put a lot of creatures on the board, the Orchestra Conductor will be better. I'll explain Orchestra Conductor in just a little bit. Running three copies of the Newspaper Zombie, so the Newspaper Zombie is okay. When it is hurt, it gets plus four attack. So you really want to play this, try to play this as much as you can against an opponent's creature. We are running four copies of Sumo. This is a card with really great stats. Two attack, three health. When it pops out of that gravestone, you move a plant, so you're trying to move the plant to a place it will be in an unfavorable matchup for your opponent. Uh, sometimes it'll be as a protective. It's a really, really great card. In the three slot, the only real three slot it was worth running in this deck was the Disco Zombie. It makes a th it is three attack, one health, and it makes a little one one. Even though the stats of this are not really great, sometimes that little 1-1 one, one can kind of finish off a plant that only has one health. Uh, and it's especially good when you come to the next turn, which is Orchestra Conductor. Spawning the two minions will actually give Orchestra Conductor a little bit of extra kick, because this makes all zombies, including itself, get two extra attack. So if you had played a lot of creatures, let's say even the newspaper zombie, the sad newspaper, it only has one attack. 
or some of your other creatures, your tennis champ or your little, you know, dancers that little dancer that spawned from this only has one attack, your orchestra conductor will come in and give them all a lot of extra attack. Combining that with Camel Crossing can give a lot of spawn a lot of creatures onto the board, add attack, add health, and uh, you can really take over the game, especially if you have Flag Zombie, which really helps you swarm a lot of minions in a small amount of time. Also in the stack, we are running four copies of the Chickening. Two damage each plant, really good, field clear, awesome, awesome card. In terms of late game, it's also very, very solid. Uh, we are running four copies of Imp Throwing Gargantuar, nice, solid 5-5 five, five whenever it... Uh, is hit it spawns a little 1-1 one, one minion so that little 1-1 one, one minion can also be buffed by the orchestra conductor so we have a little synergy here coming in the seventh slot just to add a little more late game to the stack we are running one copy of night of the living dead very expensive but it has five attack five health and two armor reduces every attack coming in by two this is a very solid deck it's not again quite as good as the gravestone decks i would say but if you can really get swarm your minions try to buff them up with your orchestra conductors, use chickening to clear your opponent's field. Use the camel crossing to buff all your minions and then come in with a lake and finish them off. This is really a solid deck from beginning to end. So if you have Z-Mech and you're a beginner player, I would definitely suggest trying to play with this deck. Here's Neptuna. So Neptuna is a sneaky hero. So we are definitely making a gravestone deck out of Neptuna. It's actually typically one of the best gravestone decks in the game is Gravestone Neptuna. We are a little limited since we're only using the cards from the basic class. We're a little bit limited in the Gravestone synergy. So turn one, you're trying to play Headstone Carver again. It's a 1-3. Whenever you play another Gravestone, that zombie will get plus one, plus one. Really coming, trying to come on turn two with either your Sumo, which has 2-3. If it's bought by the Headstone Carver, this is going to be a 3-4, which is one of the best stats for a two-drop Gravestone on turn two. Also, you can move a zombie, which will help protect your headstone carver. Really good combo. Also, running four copies of Swashbuckler, which is another really great two-drop gravestone. So you're really trying to start in your starting hand with the headstone carver and with one of your two-drop gravestones. Coming up in the three slot for gravestones, I'll explain the gravestones first in this deck, is the smelly zombie. So if you still have your headstone carver on the board, this would become a 3-5. Gravestone with Deadly, which is amazing for a 3-drop, so you're definitely trying to get your Gravestones going early on. Running 4 copies of Camel Crossing this deck gives your cards a little bit extra health, so especially if you can get your Gravestones going, putting a Camel Crossing up in there uh, will definitely give them extra health and a lot of survivability. Running 4 copies of the Fishy Imp, 3-1, it's amphibious, you can put it in the water lane. 4 copies of the Hot Dog Imp which is a 2-2, it is strike through, which means it will damage through your opponent's uh, plants and hit your opponent's face. And that is a great combo with the Imp Commander. Imp Commander, 2-4, so it's pretty good stats for a 3-drop, and whenever any Imp hits your, the plant hero and damages it, you will draw a card. So that combos very well with the Fishy Imp and with the Hot Dog Imp, especially the Hot Dog Imp, it keeps on striking through and is very likely to hit your opponent's hero that way. We're running one copy of Backyard Bounce just to add a little bit more removal into the deck. Bounce a plant so if they play this huge plant you can't deal with. Sometimes the best way to deal with it is bounce it out. The other removal we have in this deck of course is Smelly Zombie being deadly. It is able to remove any plant that it hurts. So that's a good strategy. Uh, for the 4 drop, really Neptuna, I wouldn't actually rate this version of this deck as high as some of the other gravestones. Even though the early game is very good, especially with the Sumo Zombie, but the late game is very, very lacking in this deck. Just for anything, any, you know, lack of anything better than this, we are running 4 copies of the Medic, heal for 4. Sometimes you can heal a zombie with this, sometimes you can heal your hero with this, it's kind of mediocre, the stats for a 4 drop are only 3-3, three, three. and there's no 5 drops in this deck, there is no 5 drops available for Neptune in the basic set, so we are just going all the way up to turn 7, and going with Night of the Living Dead, so Neptuna Gravestone, I really would not suggest this for very beginning players, if you get some of the premium cards which are, you know, more th 3 cost and 4 cost and 5 cost cards which have grave, you know, really work well with the gravestones like pogo zombies and stuff, I would then suggest that gravestone Neptuna would be amazing for beginner players, but if you're really just going based on the basic set alone, there's like no late game in this deck. You have to really rely completely on your imp commander to draw cards so they won't fall behind in the late game. So again, this is a, a pretty good deck, it is a gravestone deck, it definitely has its moments, but even of the gravestone decks, just because of the lack of late game, I would not necessarily recommend this basic set until you can get some premium cards. 
Alright everybody, so that is all for this video. We have gone through all of the plant heroes and all the zombie heroes. You can check out any one that was not in this video in a past video. This will conclude them all, so we've gone through all the basic sets. Again, as you get premium cards, definitely add them into these decks. It will make them better. But you have some very, very solid choices for all basic decks, so these decks are available to everyone. So I hope you enjoyed. This is Fry. Peace.